I love native plants because there's such a big variety of them. And I like to think of myself as a good Aussie bloke, and so I like to keep Aussie plants. The garden itself is a refuge for the family, the grandchildren, and for the native animals that, that come and visit. I'm in Maroubra, five minutes from the beach in Sydney's east, to visit Kim Rutter and check out his award-winning native garden. Growing on a 700 square metre block, Kim's garden is a real celebration of Australian plants. He's painstakingly propagated, grafted and sought out local species and native plants from around the country to create a beautiful setting, bursting with habitat. So when did your interest in native plants begin? It started when I was a boy. I spent a lot of time in the Karingal National Park. Then later on, in the 1970s, I went to a lot of flower shows run by the Australian Plant Society. When I first went to those, I'd never seen the, the tropical brush grevilleas before, and that sparked a real interest. So how did you go about designing the garden? The first thing, realising that there was a big rock ledge under there, uh, was to find out where the depth of soil was. So I went around with a rod, made a survey, and that's why that bed's there, because it's deeper. Same with that one. After that, it was just a matter of getting things to look as natural as possible. The main beds and smaller garden pockets have made for a variety of rooms, connected by corridors, creating a nice sense of mystery as you travel from room to room. What's been your approach to plant selection? I try to select plants which have got different colour, different textures in their leaves and different leaf colour. Now this one, for example, is Grevillea Midas Touch. Yeah, it's a hybrid of uh, Grevillea juncifolia from Western Australia. Yes, yeah, so I'm pretty keen on Western Australian Grevilleas because they, they provide a lot of colour, different forms, and most of the ones that I've got are grafted Grevilleas, which enables them to be grown in the east. Amazing to see them growing here as well as this. Here's an example of great texture. It's Banksia roba. It's one of my favourites because of its large, rumply, leathery leaves. And when it rains, you can hear the rain falling on the leaf. It's better than a tin roof, really, and I know this is a spent flower, but when this plant's in bud, you get this bright, metallic green ball of flower buds. Absolutely amazing. And it turns into a really nice yellow flower, which the honey eaters love. It hasn't flowered very well since it's been a little bit older. This is an uncommon grevillea, Grevillea humifusa. It's a Western Australian prostrate grevillea and it's on a standard graft so that it shows its best features. So what, it's on a silky oak, I'm guessing? Yes, it is. Yeah, so it gives it a little bit of height. Now, I love the way it's spilling down. It's doing so well. What are you doing in the soil? The soil is very sandy and quite shallow, so it loses water readily. Put layer upon layer of mulch over the years, and so we've got a fairly rich top layer over the sandy soil at the bottom, which the roots like to get into. Gardeners planted really densely. What's the concept there? In nature, you don't see plants growing as individual plants. They're all higgledy-peeledy in together. And what I've tried to do here is to plant a lot of plants all together, and let them fight for themselves and those that survive, survive, those that don't, don't, and gives me an opportunity to plant more. Angus, this tea tree, it's in bud, but it's looking tired and old. What would you do with it? Well, to me, it could linger on for years, looking, frankly, rather terrible like this. So it's either kill or cure for me. If you cut it back straight after it's flowered, because it's then going into its active growth period, gives it a great chance to recover and return to its former glory. Thank you. So what's next for you, Kim? When I retire in the near future, uh, I want to develop my propagation skills, especially grafting. I'd like to continue opening the garden in the Australian Open Garden Scheme and try to influence more people and inspire them to garden with native plants. <laughs>